What is going on guys, Chris here, or Mighty Furtado, and today we're going to be talking about Gauntlet. Gauntlet is the 2014 remake of the original Gauntlet that actually came out on the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1987. Now, this game was probably one of my most anticipated games of September. Um, not a big anticipated release, but it was kind of like a filler game that would kind of keep me a little bit occupied until bigger releases were to come out, such as Alien Isolations, uh, Shadows of Mordor, and also Forza, uh, Forza Horizon, which is uh, one of my favorite racing car simulator series. Obviously on the console, because I don't think there actually is one coming out for the PC, unless it's Project Cars, which is actually, I believe, supposed to release at the end of November, which is uh, another game I'm looking forward to. But anyways, so yeah, on to Gauntlet. So Gauntlet is a top-down hack and slash video game. Uh, it is made by Arrowhead Game Studios, which is also the studios that made Magicka. And it obviously is published by Warner Brothers. Now, uh, this game for the PC is... It's alright, because this was, for me, a filler game. It wasn't a game that, you know, it's a full blown-out release title. It's not a game that would last me about, you know... 10 to 15 hours of gameplay it honestly it lasted for me it took me about three to four hours to actually beat the entire game because for me i did play it solo i didn't play it with anybody else because at the time i actually didn't know of anybody um who actually had the game there are people on my friends list on steam but obviously those are some people that i don't know in real life and they probably added me through youtube or some other um other ways they must have added me so I played the game solo, and it took me about three to four hours to beat. Uh, it wasn't that long. I actually only played one character class, which was the Elven Archer, which so far would be my favorite class because I find that I find the Elven Archer the most easiest approach or the most easiest character to actually beat the game in. Um, not the strongest, but you know, obviously being an archer, you do have the range and you have the dodge ability, which all characters do, but. Uh, the Elven Archer, in my opinion, was the most easiest to actually beat the game in. Uh, there are three other classes that you can play as. I uh, don't know their actual titles, but I know one of them is like a wizard. Obviously, it has a bunch of spells you can cast. And there's actually a tutorial at the beginning of the game where it kind of teaches you, teaches you how to play each character. And the wizard I had most difficult time with, maybe because I'm a noob and I suck at uh, Gauntlet games. But uh, it kind of had the Magicka-esque type uh, on how to play the... The wizard, because if you played Magicka before, you can actually use, I believe, Q W E R A S D F and also your mouse buttons to actually use different spells so you can do different combos. And so they did that exactly like this for Wizard, which is kind of a cool thing. I'm not too sure if it was somewhat of a, an Easter egg or a throwback to Magicka, but it was actually really cool that they did add that. Uh, the other character, which is somewhat like a paladin type character, she did have a shield and she did have a sword. And her basic attack, she could swing the sword, and then if you right-click on the mouse, she can actually dash towards enemy, uh, dealing more damage, or damage to more than just one enemy. And the uh, the last character that there is is the Barbarian. The Barbarian was actually the first character I chose, and I actually did play the game on hard. But I was like, you know what, I'd rather just take my time with the game, play it normally, and see how I like it. And if I do like it, then I'll play it on hard with uh, another character. But unfortunately, that didn't happen, so I did only play it with the Archer. Um, you know, I had fun with the archer, he was alright. The one thing I didn't like really about the, the characters in this game is that, you know, you can change the way that the, the way that they look in the shop because there's a shop in like the main hub of the game and uh, there is this uh, NPC that you do talk to and you are able to, you know, purchase different things to make, to make them look different or you can actually purchase these things called relics. Uh, and relics are actually these two items that you can actually have equipped and they give you different stats like for example one of them for the archer would uh, make you run faster and also attack faster for a certain period of duration and you can actually upgrade it to the next level which would increase the duration of it uh, or it could actually make you go faster which is actually really cool uh, other relics that there were there was one that would summon a gargoyle and uh, when you upgrade that the gargoyle's attack speed will increase and also the final grid, I believe, the gargoyle would actually explode on impact. I'm not too sure what the correct order of that one was. I think I mixed them up. Uh, his attack speed was second, and then he blows up when he dies, or vice versa, whatever one that was. 
Uh, there was another one, which was actually like a Frostborn type of thing. I'm using Frostborn because I just actually finished playing League of Legends. Uh, the Frostborn would actually freeze enemies in direction. I'm not too sure what the upgrades for that one was because I didn't really complete it, but you guys are obviously seeing the gameplay, so I do go over them uh, quite a bit so you can actually see what the upgrades are like and how much they actually cost. Uh, obviously, the first couple ones don't cost that much, but when you get down to the other ones, uh, the last few they do cost a lot more because they are considered more, you know, powerful than the first ones. So, um, you know, now I want to get into what I don't like about the game. Now, what I don't like about the game was even though it was a filler game, uh, I found it too short. And uh, there are three main stages. Now, for the first stage, well, there's three main areas, sorry. Uh, three main areas and then there's four levels. So, uh, the, first, the first one was actually... Uh, believe was the longest for me because actually the last boss in that one was probably the most difficult boss uh, in the game and um, so if you do the math correctly you got four areas each of them have three stages there's about 12 levels per area so in total you're getting 36 levels and uh, in three of the areas there are three bosses so in the fourth one is your final boss and um, you know the bosses like I said the first one was probably the hardest the second one was actually really the easiest one and the third one wasn't the hardest but it was also the longest one so you know it's all right um, yeah so what I also didn't like about the game was that um, the character customization I know it's a gauntlet game and I know they want to take it back to its roots to the original days like it was for the NES and also there was the PS2 release back in 2002 or 2003 I believe it was actually also an arcade uh, version of this game. I don't remember seeing it in any arcades that I went to when I was younger, but when I was when I used to read the gaming magazines such as EGM and uh, I think it was GamePro, I believe I saw a couple ads for Gauntlet for the arcade machine. So, um, you know, I, I like the idea that they were taking it back. They didn't want to add too many things that would kind of change the game and then a lot of hardcore fans wouldn't like. So, you know, I understand that, but coming from my point, um, you know, what I like about these, you know, top-down hacker slash shooters, even dungeon crawlers such as uh, Diablo, Torchlight, or uh, The Adventures of Van Helsing, or even Path of Exile. Um, the, the cool thing I like about those games is actually you can actually customize the characters, and you can make them look the way you want. And, like, when you customize the characters, you kind of get different stats. But in this game, you don't really get stats. The, the only reason, the only way you do get stats is if you actually complete these certain tasks. And at the end of each level, uh, there are four kind of drop down things that the um, and once you complete a certain one of these you'll actually uh, upgrade some stats that you have so one of them for example is destroy a thousand goblins or uh, kill like ten thousand certain enemies and your damage will be increased by ten percent another one is uh, drop the crown so there is this item in the game that enemies will drop which is a crown and when you finish it with it on your head um, you actually get a bonus, I believe it's like 500 gold or something, depending how many times you dropped it or something like that. So, there's another one that's like, drop the crown 80 times, and it, um, I forget what the stat for that one is, but it gives you a bonus stat, which is actually really cool, and I, I do, uh, I do like that, which is alright. But yeah, anyways, other than the, uh, the little task that you complete that increase your stats, uh, going back to what I was saying about the actual way that your character looks, um, you know, I like how they kept it to its roots, you know, you can change the way the character looks like with uh, different items and stuff like that, but it's not about the loot system. It's just about, like, customizing your character to look differently, which I understand. Like I stated before, they wanted to bring it back to its original roots, and they didn't want to make it uh, make it as a game such as Diablo or uh, Path of Exile, which is completely understandable. Um, let me see. What other things that I not like about the game? Oh yeah, one more other thing I did not like about the other game was actually the, the shortness of the game. Um, like I said, there are three areas, each having four stages, um, having 36 maps total, or 36 levels total, I think it's correctly. Um, it's, a, it's a shortness of the game. I, I find that there's really no replayability for the game, in my honest opinion, because, you know, if you want to, you can play the game on a harder difficulty, you can actually customize your character. Uh, because the way you can actually customize your character to make them look differently is that you have to beat the certain areas in a certain difficulty. So for like, uh, 
you know, area one, you have to complete all the stages on hard. And once you complete all the stages on hard, you can actually buy the costume or the, the outfit or a certain piece of the outfit that can go for your character. Um, which is actually really cool, but I don't see no, you know, emphasis of actually doing it because I don't really see a reason for doing it. You know, once you complete the game, you're not actually, actually getting another stat, you're just making your character look completely different. So, you know, for me, that's kind of, kind of a turn off, but, you know, they want to keep it to its roots, uh, its original roots, I guess. So, you know, that's that. Um, other than that, there's really nothing else I dislike about the game. The The music in this game was actually really cool. Uh, at the beginning of the game, they actually brought back for a, s a couple seconds the original soundtrack that was in the game when the game uh, started, uh, which is actually really cool. In the options, there's actually a an option that you can click that makes the game into a classic mode, which kind of makes your screen all like pixely which is cool um but other than that there's really not much else to talk about about the game you know i did enjoy it it was all right it was a little short on the short side three to four hours i find no replayability on it you know some people might want to play the stages on a different uh a harder difficulty or play as a different class you know i played each class a little bit but like i finished the game as an archer because i found that to be the easiest class uh, I'd probably rank it like Archer, uh, the Paladin, the Barbarian, and then the Wizard because the Wizard I had more difficulty with just coming out with the spells even in the tutorial area I had uh, difficulty with it maybe because I'm a noob or I just suck at the game. So I'd probably recommend the game for anybody who wants to play the game co-op-ly. Co-op co is actually probably one of the best ways to play this game. Uh, if you're somebody who just wants to you know, waste three to four hours, I really don't recommend this game. Uh, unless you're an original fan of the Gauntlet series for the PS2 as well as well as the NES, but honestly, other than that, I think I think the game's alright. It's an average game. It's nothing too crazy or too big to go uh, crazy over a belt. It's an average game. But uh, other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed my somewhat mini review of Gauntlet, and hopefully uh, you guys check it out. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. This is Chris or my Tato. Take it easy.